I'm not the type that's like I, I don't really like to dress like sweet and right, girly. Right, I'm more same. of like a I'm a cool gal, but yes. I'm not as cool as Michelle. I'm more like I'm like girly cool. I don't know how to say. It. I don't know what fashion. In Tagalog, she's just more kikai than me. I'm kikai. Yeah. Hello, Mega. This is Michelle Marquez D. And this is Antonia Porcelt for Mega Up Close and Personal. Today, Today we, we will be answering, answering questions, questions from Mega, woman to woman. Let's do it. How does embracing one's sensuality through fashion empower women? If you ask somebody like me who loves fashion, I actually went on this whole journey of trying to find my own like fashion identity. Mm -hmm. Honestly, it's embracing that personal style that I have and yes. just owning it, even if it's different, not caring, as long as I know that I look good. I couldn't have said it any better. I feel like the moment you are confident in the power that you hold and the confidence that you have within yourself, what you wear, how you wear it, it doesn't matter because you know that the power and your aura just shines through. Exactly. Anyway. I mean, fashion can be an art form or a form of self-expression as well. So just explore it and have fun with it. Mega is curious. Was there a moment in your life, Antonia, that you didn't feel confident about your body? And how did you overcome it? I think I can speak for a lot of girls, unfortunately, that my body confidence actually didn't even exist until very recently in the past five years. Okay. I've always been very insecure about how I look, especially coming into the industry where being skinny was normalized. Right. And or skinny girls had like an advantage yes, exactly. in, what, in the and industry. Yeah, that we're and in. real size beauty wasn't like accepted in... Right. So, let's be honest, Asia, yes, yes. because the normal is skinny, tall, which is what I wasn't. I was an uh -huh. athlete and I, I was big built and I didn't Same. see the importance of beauty, on your outer beauty, being such a huge factor on decisions on whether you were going to get right, jobs or not, right. blah, blah, blah. But the moment I did find my confidence, it really was from something within where mm -hmm. the moment I accepted myself, I took the time to love myself and understand myself and see that, you know, I have a power and a voice that matters. It really cut down a lot of negativity right, in right. my life and it made me live so much more happily. Everything she said is spot on. I mean, I too went on a really long process of also being confident in myself. Mm -hmm. Like I hated being in public and wearing yeah. like a swimsuit or a yeah. bikini and I think that was a product of especially when I was younger a product of really trying to conform with what the societal beauty standards yes. were so uh, I would do all of the crash diets I think I did about all of the crash diets out there that switch was when I started seeing really long lasting sustainable results by choosing more sustainable weight loss journeys so now I just make more healthier food choices. Yeah, I think it's, it's all about conscious. balance. Yeah. Balance and understanding what your body needs because it's not the same for everyone. It's all about preference on what makes right. you feel confident inside. But it's also about going outside your comfort zone and feeling that a little a little bit of uncertainty and being a little bit scared to know that when you do try something new that like in terms of fashion right. That nobody's actually judging you. Exactly. You're your biggest. You're just in your head. Yeah, you're your biggest judgment. So you just have to kind of get out of your head and be like, you know what? I need to embrace myself. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> that is why she's Antonia Porcelt, everyone. <laughs> Moving the on. next question. <laughs> Do you think the fashion industry is making progress in embracing diversity and inclusivity in terms of body types? Oh my gosh. Of course. I mean, like you mentioned earlier, the standards of beauty back then were just so much higher. Yeah. I feel like and not realistic and unrealistic of course there's just a shift in um, I guess in the whole industry you have like the Fenty show which really embraces yes. inclusivity yeah. we have like Miss Universe that tries to embrace inclusivity as well yeah. and I think the world is slowly progressing and transitioning into being inclusive I think the world really wants yeah. to be inclusive 
it's just a process yeah. and we just have to do our own little part in exactly. contributing to that. Little steps. Little <laughs> steps. Be the change you want to see in the world. Everyone wants to see change. Everyone wants to see inclusivity and diversity, but it all starts from us. Right. We need to be open to that change and be willing to embrace it for ourselves and for the people around us so that we can create that positive impact and have that right. ball rolling. Mm -hmm. All right, Antonia, this is about how you dress. What is your go-to ensemble that naturally exudes confidence and strength within you? Ooh. I guess like what's your go-to look? Okay, like for work or for casual? Both? For, for casual, I always tend to go a little bit more jeans, t-shirt, and I'll kind of <laughs> spice it up with a blazer. Hey. <laughs> um, but I think it really depends on our body types as well. Like right. I have a kind of short torso, so I need to dress differently to kind of embrace and enhance certain yeah. Yeah. parts of my body. But I really do like to wear a lot of color to show my personality mm -hmm. because my face is already kind of right. doesn't look so friendly when I don't smile. So I've kind of started refraining from black, but I love black. I though. know you do. I know you do. I was. I had to. <laughs> for that. But I, I'm not the type that's like. I, I don't really like to dress like sweet and right, girly. Right, I'm more same. of like a. I'm a cool gal. But yes. I'm not as cool as Michelle. I'm more like. I'm like girly cool. I don't know how to say. It. I don't know what the fashion. In Tagalog, she's just more kikai than me. I'm kikai. Yeah. yeah. Kikai is. Kikai yeah, or girly. Kikai. Kikai. Ki with a y. kikai. Right? I'm Kikai cool. My best advice would really just to make sure that you know your assets and what you yeah. want to highlight, work your wardrobe around that. I mean, like today, I mean, I know my shoulders are big assets, so that's what I show. I'm very insecure about my torso, so that's what I try to hide. <laughs> you look great, regardless of what you wear. You look gorgeous anyway. You don't need to oh, be about anything. You. No, I mean like fashion has always been very important to me. Not because mm -hmm. that anybody was pressuring me to get into fashion. I think it's just because I come from um, a showbiz family. My mom was like a supermodel. She always made trends. When I was younger, she always said that, you know, you don't have to show so much skin to be sexy. Yes. Sometimes yes. you just have to be mysterious. That's you have where to the tease sexiness them. is. Yeah, you the can mystery. be wearing. Exactly. Yes. You can be totally covered up, but it could all come out of your eyes and your smile, eyes or your the... body language. Yeah. Okay, moving on to the next okay, question. Okay, okay. <laughs> Why is it important not to shame women for their choice of clothing? I mean, uh, to each their own. There is no single rule to do fashion right. It's kind of like art. You, some people, some people understand it, some people don't, but what's important is that it expresses what you really want to say, whatever makes you feel confident. Yeah. And I think that's the most important thing. It's, it's about time that we really stop comparing and trying to bring other people down. If you yeah. have nothing nice to say, don't, don't say, say anything it. at all. <laughs> it's more of an us problem, not being careful with what mm. we put out into the universe. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we should really just be fostering an environment that really helps everybody become the best versions of themselves. Yeah, I think a lot of the shaming mm -hmm. definitely comes from a place of insecurity yeah. from the person who shames the, the other person because of their clothing, because they are not daring enough to wear yes. what the other person is wearing. So they choose to kind of go on the negative route which is not something that we want, especially yeah. as women. We need to embrace empower and each empower other. each other, not like bringing each other down because of our own insecurities. Exactly. Um, so yeah, we need to get way past that. We're better than that. We are everyone. Yeah, let us wear what we want and don't tell us how to dress. How, how? did your look... Oh, wait, no, sorry. It's, it's not turn. me, it's her. I'm so excited. It's me, hi. <laughs> All right, so how do you incorporate elements of your cultural background and individual interests into your wardrobe? So what I absolutely love is um, when I go somewhere internationally right. or to pageants like Miss Universe, I try to wear Thai designers, Thai designer brands, or I like to wear clothing that is made from Thai silk. Um, just to kind of showcase what Thailand has to offer in terms right, of like exactly. materials that you can still use like Asian methods of clothing as yeah, more contemporary yeah, exactly. items and also by Thai designers to show their skill and to kind of just use my platform to embrace that soft power so to say. Exactly. Either I custom make them 
mm-hmm. based off of like what I've seen. Okay, right. like I'll do like the high waisted pants and like a yeah. crop. In a in a Antonia and I have very similar yeah, she wardrobe did, yeah, choices. Yeah, that is true. Like I would wear this, she would wear this. We could survive off of each other's. Closet. I don't know if you would survive from my closet because I'm too kikai. For you. Well, you're wearing this, and I'm yeah, totally okay. If we're talking this. about this, then I, yeah, <laughs> I think she would wear this. I mean, but I can totally relate because when I competed at Miss Universe, also like I really wanted to make my wardrobe as close to 100% Filipino yeah. made as possible yeah, yeah. because you know I'm so proud to be Filipino yeah. just like you're so proud to represent Thailand yes. you know me being on the global stage getting that much attention it's nice to also share that exposure yeah. share that the Filipino power yeah, the Filipino power yes. and we have so many skilled creatives here yes. and it would be a shame not to show the whole universe that yeah. so you know Ryuji was my style Ryuji Shimitsu and uh, yeah we brought 72 looks but they're all Filipino yeah. produced yeah a lot of my outfits during the Miss Universe competition were also by Thai designers either custom made or right. like, already or RTW yeah oh like. well, I, I know you feel the same like when you wear it you feel a kind of inner it's a power sense of pride also, yeah pride also. and power of being able to represent your country and the people and the culture to the world exactly yeah so the next question is how did your look at the miss universe 2023 coronation night represent your personal power and identity Ooh. oh my gosh i feel Ooh. like this question was made for you if you don't already know i mean where have you been the last i was gonna say months? if you have if you don't already know then <laughs> you probably missed out on know. quite a lot of events <laughs> so i wore an amazing creation by mark Bumgarner, um a black beautiful gown which was taken inspiration from apple wang Od. If you don't know who that is, she is a hundred, almost a hundred and eight years old, and she is an amazing symbol of just cultural preservation. It's not just because it, we took inspiration from her. I mean, I love what she stands for. I love what she's been able to do for the Philippines, but also the way Mark was able to design the gown to also fit my personal style yeah. and make sure that I also shine as Michelle Mark as the mm-hmm. on that stage and not make it seem like it's so forced mm-hmm. i think it's amazing i mean again credits to mark bongarner and his team for just creating such an amazing amazing piece i think your dress was definitely one of the most extraordinary dresses Thank i've you. ever seen on the miss universe Thank stage you. not because we're great friends and because mark is such a great guy but because it held so much culture and it history does. in such a modern way and in such a extravagant way. I don't even know how to explain it. It was just like, you I've never seen such a dress like that on the stage I mean, uh, truly the team did have a big challenge of trying to create something that was normally used for the national costume, yeah. an idea normally used for the nat cost, and transitioning that into an elegant evening gown. So we had a lot to accomplish, but we were able to execute that flawlessly, mm-hmm. made the whole Philippines proud, shocked the whole universe as well, but. I don't think anyone would have, could have worn it better than you. Thank you. So my look for the final night of Miss Universe was designed by a Thai designer who I have been working with since 2019 at uh, since I was Miss Supranational 2019 when I came back from the competition basically what was happening was so I was having a little bit of trouble getting gowns and borrowing clothes because I wasn't known which is understandable and they supported me since 2019 That's amazing. and It was kind of a showcase of our entire journey together of their hard work and how much they've gotten to know me and put my style, my spin onto the dress that I wore. And it was kind of like a a way of saying thank you to them. Whether I mean, the dress was great. Beautiful dress. It was fit to my liking because I'm very much like a less is more type of person. And it fit her like a glove, everyone. Yes, thank you. And even from the jewelry that was custom made, the ring, the the two rings, Mm -hmm. it was kind of like a... A, a dress of our journey together and I can totally agree with that because you know it really does take a village to create a queen fit for the Miss Universe stage yeah. and as much as possible you want to really give your team as much spotlight as possible because yeah. they too work just as hard exactly. to make your dream come true yeah. we're just the the hanger we're just the muse yeah <laughs> and now for our last question mega wants to know 
How has the concept for this mega cover shoot relate to your personal journey towards women empowerment? Oh, okay. I mean, I truly loved the whole experience of shooting, especially because it's not just like a summer shoot, a summer sexy shoot. I know they tried to infuse so much of both of our cultures yeah. into the wardrobe pieces. I feel like just being able to add that extra layer of storytelling, of representation, just made me feel, I guess, proud. I mean, the yeah. water was really cold, but the yeah. whole experience was <laughs> it amazing. It was great. Yeah, I definitely have to thank Mega for bringing me to the Philippines to unite with my universe sister, Michelle, and also just kind of making this happen. I, I was really, really in awe of how it turned out. I mean, I. I'm sure it will turn out great, but just the idea behind it, how much time it took to really tell a story through the pictures, through right. our, both of our cultures, mm -hmm. through its similarities and differences, exactly. through the fashion, and you said like a lot of storytelling through the pieces. So it wasn't just a fashion set, but yeah, it was yeah, a kind of a story of two cultures coming together and uniting, which is yeah. what we tried to do during our journey I mean, as that's well. That's what the whole hashtag party yes. represents. It's the unity of different nations. Mm -hmm. There we have it, everyone. I hope you Our enjoyed our little Q&A yes. care of Mega. This has been Antonia Porcel. And this has been Michelle marquez -D for Mega Up Close and Personal. Make it big, make it mega.